Thank you, Richa. Did you make it yourself, Jyoti? Sorry? Did you make it yourself? No, no, no. I just got a journal and I always go by the cover that best resonates with me. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. So let's begin, everybody. Welcome to yet another um, online Money Book Club discussion. And um, for everybody who is watching us, joining us on Facebook, if, you're, if you have not yet become a part of the Telegram, the buzzing, uh, you know, Telegram group um, where we have over 500 women who've joined in, uh, then the description uh, of this video has the link to the, the membership form and you can just fill that in and we will add you to the Telegram group as well. So we're waiting to welcome you. Um, today we are we have been discussing this book, Know Yourself, Know Your Money by Rachel Cruz. And um, Rachel Cruz is the famous Dave Ramsey's daughter and who is known to help people get out of debt. Um, so the purpose of the online money book club at Women on Wealth, of course, you know, we talk about financial education for women. And the purpose of the book club is so that books can be another resource from where we can learn. And women can, for whom maybe the idea of finance is brand new, but and she wants to, however, learn it and take her financial life to the next level, then books can become an easy way to just get acquainted with the various uh, thinking patterns around money, building habits around money. Okay, so the purpose is to help women build financial awareness one book at a time. And we've been around for two years and have read a lot of books together with the community. Um, so welcome, Rashmi. Thanks so much for joining in. Um, today we are discussing chapter nine and ten. We'll begin with uh, some snippets from chapter nine, and I invite everybody to participate and share what they have liked from chapter nine. So over to you guys. What are some favorite parts from uh, chapter nine? Please start sharing. Great. Hey, Kavya, thanks for joining in. Wonderful to see you here in the discussion. So anybody who's reached uh, chapter nine and have read it, the part where she talks about, you know, uh, discovering what you do with money and why and what motivates you to spend money, why we buy what we buy, you know, so she talks a lot about uh, the reasons behind the purchases we make. So any favorite <laughs> favorite parts <laughs> that you have, guys? Okay, so let me share some of my uh, favorite parts from the book here, okay? Mm. Fear is, uh, of course, something that uh, she has highlighted uh, in the book quite a, quite a number of times, right? And uh, Fear of man is making choices for your life based on what other people think or do. So wh why we spend what, what we spend, why we buy what we buy. I buy something because look kya kahenge otherwise. You know, anybody who's been a victim of this phrase, look kya kahenge, you know, acha kapra nahi pehna do. If, if I wear the same clothes, as I think some discussion was going on in the book club as well. That if you wear the same set of clothes to one wedding and another, then what would people think, you know? So any anybody who has been in this situation or have people around you who maybe come and point, but don't you think you've worn that already? Yeah, it's happened to me, Shital. I mean, I don't find it worthwhile to buy one lehenga or whatever and then just wear it once and keep it in my closet. So I try and recycle or at least wear them again. So I bought something for my cousin's wedding and then I waited for four years to be able to wear it again for another cousin's wedding. And then someone pointed out that, oh, haven't you worn it already? I'm like, yes, but <laughs> that's all right. So I just, yeah, I, I don't see the point in just keeping things for one occasion. Okay. I'd rather not. Uh, I would also like to share, as I already shared in the Telegram group about the same instance, that once I wore uh, a lehenga for my cousin's wedding, 
and i repeated the same after maybe 3 years or something for the, for another wedding and somebody came up to me and told me that uh, then you wear the same thing for that one's marriage i said um, yeah and i'm going to wear the same one for the next wedding also because it fits me and i like the color it's orange and yellow i love the color so when i went home i actually thought about it are yaar ye shaadi pe maine ye pehna tha kya really pehna tha kya uske baad actually became conscious you know and then i uh, still did not bother to go out and buy uh, for other other wedding but um, i borrowed from my other cousin that's what i do now i borrow from my other cousin to return your clothes back do banda pehn ke but i do not buy my own clothes i just like to They are too costly, and there is not so much space in Bombay to, you know, keep buying clothes and keep dumping them in your cupboard. It gets really difficult to store them. Yeah, I was just adding on, you know, that uh, like I hardly ever wear sarees, okay, like maybe once in a year to someone's wedding. So I don't see the point of buying uh, and just having them in my closets. And my cousins wear lots of sarees, so. They just lend it to me for you know, some occasion. I pick up, I pick up a blouse or something. Yeah, just wear it, look good, and return it back to them with a lot of <laughs> gratefulness. <laughs> so you know, thanks all for adding uh, to the discussion. I think uh, for me, um, the whole um, repeating something uh, again because I've been somebody who has really used the social media platforms. and um i remember i don't know how long ago was this but definitely i had done the money gym program already and i was still having uh, thoughts around oh my god but let me not share the photo because i'm wearing the same dress to another person's wedding and i think that year i had bought this one set and the way i broke that pattern and uh, to be okay about wearing the same set at different occasions was when in that year i remember buying a set for a very reasonable price i was so proud of that purchase and i wore it five times diwali mein bhi pehna aur do shaadiya mein bhi pehna and you know and that year i really broke that pattern of uh, oh my god how can i wear it again or at least i had that bit of being a little conscious initially but i broke that pattern that year and um, another thing that thanks to the community that we have at least the few members who used to physically also meet at the women on wealth center you know pre lockdown times we <coughs> began to you know share stuff we began open about the fact that we can you know if somebody is decluttering and if that size fits me then she'll think of me and send stuff across and said you know would you like to check it out and all of that so that also became um, okay and the, in the within the community and just to bore i know i borrowed one or two sarees from khushali and i wore it to uh, someone's wedding and you know and we are very open about so that of course we are helping each other save money so that we can invest more uh, so that's how the community is supporting and really breaking out of whatever had captivated me and uh, you know used to make me just spend for every occasion so Yeah, that has been my journey with money. <laughs> Still, can I yes. share something? Yes, Jyoti, please. You know, not not very uh, different from what uh, Kanchan and uh, Richa shared, but um, I have absolutely no qualms in admitting that inherently, uh, I am inherently a mover. You know, so I remember I'd been to Delhi for a wedding and. Uh, Uh, one relative who's typically known for all this i mean she walked up to me and wahan pe ye hai ki matching outfit ke sath aapka sweater shawl bhi matching hona hota you know you cannot be wearing half as a this thing so anyway i was wearing what i had you know picked with pehli baar itne volumes uthaye the so then i was told that uh, i mean she she almost kind of you know jaise sweater ka kona kheech ke ye tum kai saalon se dekh rahe hain maine kaha agle kai sadiyan dekhoge hmm बिकॉज पुणे डजेंट गेट विंटर्स इट्स अ वेस्ट ऑफ टाइम फॉर अस यू नो मतलब वो लिटरली छेद होने लग गए तो वी हैव टू गिव इट अवे की फिनेल की गुड़िया सो यू नो सो आई एक्चुअली हैव टू से इट इन फ्रंट ऑफ 40 50 पीपल ड्यूरिंग अ मेहंदी सेरेमनी टू दैट लेडी आई फील रियली सॉरी फॉर यू यू नो ट्राई एंड गेट सम हेल्प योर वैलिडेशन इज एट द मर्सी ऑफ हाउ ऑफन वी रिपीट क्लोथ्स सो प्लीज गो एंड डू समथिंग मीनिंगफुल इन लाइफ प्लीज यू नो एंड आफ्टर दैट आई वाज नॉट मेस्ड विद सो आई आई प्राउडली टाउट दैट एज माय अचीवमेंट 
अभी तो अभी तो मास्क आ गया है मैचिंग मास्क अभी तो मैचिंग मास्क आ गया है now be i i'm i'm saying that i think we should do we should have better things to do you know how great we feel about ourselves should not be at the mercy of you know mera ye kitna lehenga kaun se designer ne banaya hai original hai duplicate hai you know i think we need to rise above all this you know i think that's what i mean i could wear something floral with geometrical yaar meri marzi <laughs> that's what i mean <laughs> wonderful i'd like to read something from the like the paragraph from the book today Yes. So everyone looks great on the outside, like they have it all together. But it's often only a fake front, paid for with debt. The facade is supposed to give an impression of success of having arrived, but open the door to their lives, and there's only a staircase inside. And we've been comparing our own lives to something that isn't even real, and that's where the danger comes in. Oh yeah, when they go to the friends. Uh, yes. set right <laughs> on yeah. that beautiful it yes. was it was really amazing thank you for sharing rich yeah yes that was nicely put and uh, i love how in this book you know sometimes when she sort of gives the background in every chapter she gives a background as to then she comes to the point right she tries to give us a context her way of thinking and what has happened and sometimes it it surprises me i i don't see it coming as to what she's getting to Uh, and that she has i think uh, done beautifully number of times in the book so i have often gone back to my uh, you know our team uh, and uh, praise them for the book selection this has been a really light read as well at the same time something that has been quite different from the other books on money that we have read so anybody who's who's just starting you i'm i'm sure you will enjoy this book okay and um, you know so in this book in chapter 9 at the end again she leaves us with some questions and something that we can do on our own so i'm picking some things from there and um, so here she's really trying to help us see whether the kind of purchases we make align with who we are right and uh, what we value so the first question she has left us with in this chapter is look back at your bank account and review the purchases you made last month are there any categories where you overspent because you were shopping to impress other people okay so that's the question and what i now invite everybody to do is actually open your last month statement paytm whatever modes of payments you use and uh, you know sometimes book mein likha to hai but we might not really go and do it so i thought why don't we do it right now okay so we take this opportunity to just open our statement we all have access to online statements you may not name the purchase but uh, any realizations that you have upon looking at your statement or paytm uh, statements or wherever else you use your payments and uh, we will do that and and share so again she says anything that we shopped to impress other people okay so here i am opening my so money out list again so a lot of so all well we have been doing the writing in and writing out right money in money out and anybody else who doesn't do that regularly please start doing it so let me see for me every time i see the payment made to medium i cringe because i have just not wanted to the you know unsubscribe but i did read this excellent um article on medium last evening a notification had come and uh, that made it worth it but it was silly i had not disconnected my <laughs> subscription so anyway let me go back to my statement okay richa so what we are doing now <laughs> is uh, In chapter nine, Rachel talks about look back at your bank account and review the purchases you made last month. Are there any categories where you overspent 
because you were shopping to impress other people. So right now, I have actually given a task to everyone to go and look at last month's statement and uh, share if there are any revelations. You can also look at Paytm or any other payment uh, portals that you use or wallets. Let's see. We may go back to the, as I'm looking at it, we may go back to the statement and the next exercise as well. I've got a lot of exercises today. Hi, Smriti. Hi, Payal. Welcome. So, Smriti, you've just joined. What we're doing is we're looking at last month's statement and we're reviewing it for any purchases uh, categories where we overspent because we were shopping to impress other people. Okay, so this is a task by Rachel Cruz. Anybody who'd like to begin sharing, please go ahead. Sheetal, we've been in a lockdown, so there'll be no opportunities to even show up in the first place, actually. Most of mine is all uh, big basket and some shampoo that I got from Amazon. <laughs> Luckily, it's all just on food, which is basic, so no regrets there. Okay, got yeah. that. Anyone else? Pre-third wave or pre-this wave, I spent on a really fancy dinner where I didn't my share was not even like close to half of it because I was trying to be the, you know, bigger person. Okay, happens, happens quite commonly, right? Okay. I do have uh, no extra purchases apart from the Big Basket demand and uh, Amazon Pantry, that's it. No other purchases. Hmm. I'm so happy. Um, for me, there is this new, there's this new brand that has come out, right? I don't know if it's new, but there's this brand called Goldberg, right? And it sells this amazing fancy ginger ales, by the way. Okay. You should try them. They're quite good. Okay. So, and I had been on a low sugar diet and yet I've, the first time I bought, and then I didn't buy just one because I wanted to taste it. I actually picked up four bottles because Sheetal wanted different, different jo variants. Hota hai. She wanted to try everything she, for the sake of experience, you know. And then yeah, while I'm on a sugar, low sugar diet, I go and buy this and I buy four because alag -alag taste karna hai, you know. So it wasn't to show it to anybody I think somewhere oh because I can afford it you know that was the attitude I had and uh, oh, I gave myself this excuse that oh because um, alag -alag hai, so it's okay you just you just you don't buy it all the time so these were some of the validation some excuses I gave to myself I remember and uh, I don't have a habit of stocking such drinks in my refrigerator as well but it was just fancy for me to do it i fancied it i could afford it so that was um and every time i picked up the bottle i i felt i knew that you bought this on impulse <laughs> so that was my experience and uh, i can see that what about others uh, I want to share one small trick that I use over here so that I avoid impulse buying. Um, uh, I generally put them in the basket and leave it. And then I, if I want to add something else, maybe after a couple of days or at the end of the month or at the second week of the month. So I just go back to the basket and see ki what, what is already there. And then I say, Are, is ki thi nahi thi? why did I put it over here? Remove, delete, delete. That is one trick that I use. So that's not impulse. There's no impulse buying. Okay, Rashmi is saying during the pandemic, the only thing 
Um, I splurged on his food delivery. So when craving come, they have to be satisfied. The justification is what else am I spending on? Got that. Yes, yes, Rashmi can totally relate to this. Anybody else? A lot of people are just buying essentials. <laughs> Smriti, we are not. You can always go back and review December and Jan, okay? Kavya, what about you? Come on, if you're guilty, then you say you don't leave us alone, okay? Not really. I, I'm happy that I did not do anything impulsive last month. Everything was like the necessary stuff. So this is like after, you know, I just finished my money gym program. I think that's the very first change that I have in me is to become disciplined about, you know, exactly understand what I need and I, what I don't need. So yeah, I was like, everything was um, purchased for a reason. Like it was no impulsive buy this time. Yeah. Wow. Good for you, Kavya. And welcome to the community. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I can see Swapna is joined in and Bonita has joined in too. Awesome. So, um, you know, we will move it. There is one other thing I have sort of plugged it out of our, our very own Money Gym program and I'm bringing here to this discussion today because in the book, she also talks about um, when we buy something that's, uh, that's in alignment with our values, right, and purpose then it sort of helps us also see why we need that purchase. And we can clearly see, and with more practice, we are, uh, we are able to clearly see why I made that purchase. And then we don't feel uh, bad about it as well, right? So taking from the book, she, is, she's helped, she helps us explore the why behind a purchase. So I'm reading from the book here. Uh, when you buy according to your why, there's rarely any regrets bias, remorse, or overwhelming fear of that thing getting damaged. Do you know <laughs> what your why is? If you don't immediately know what's most important to you, I encourage you to spend some time thinking about it. In order to win with money, you need to know what you value most. Start by asking questions like, what moves you? Who and what matters most to you? What will you regret not doing? What unique gifts do you bring to the world? So these are some questions that you can additionally dig into from the pages of the book, right? To help you further get to your why. Um, another thing I wanted to share is um, bringing it from the Money Gym uh, program itself, okay? And, <coughs> and uh, she helps us see the why and the values. But what if I don't even know what, what are my values, right? Do you know what your values are? Uh, do you know how to see uh, what purchase is actually align, aligning with what value, okay? So to help you further, this is something that we use in the structure as well. To identify your values, you may want to make a note of this. A step one is to list down all the times from your life that you can remember when you were really happy. Let me just share it on the screen. You may take a screenshot of this. Um, okay, here you go. I hope you're able to see it, right? So step one, first to identify your values, then the alignment with the purchase can happen. And I'll also talk about that. So step one, list down all the times from your life that you can remember when you were really happy. After listing, write down what was about that moment that made you experience happiness? What factors contributed to your happiness? Okay, so we may not get down to all the values, but just this question, step number one, can you all begin to answer for yourself and write down maybe one moment, right? Um, that you remember when you were really happy Okay, and then after that, answer also this for yourself. What contributed to your happiness in that moment? Okay, so I trust <laughs> you all are answering this, uh, following this step. Okay. 
Okay. Now, if you all have something, then that's great. Step number two is list down all the times from your life that you can remember when you were really proud. When were one, maybe for this purpose, one moment when you were really, really proud. And after you write it down, answer this for yourself. What was about that moment that made you experience feeling proud? And what contributed to your feelings of pride? Giving a minute for you to just think and answer. Then the next step is, step number three is, list down all the times from your life that you can remember when you felt fulfilled and satisfied. So the moments when you, when you felt fulfillment in your life. And also try and get to what contributed to your fulfillment in that moment. So moment you were happy, moment you were proud, moment you were fulfilled. And all the factors and reasons that you write down for all the three steps will be a part of your values. And if anybody would like to share, um, I invite one person to share if you've come down to or listed down a few of your values. Okay. And after you have captured these, step four is to reaffirm your values. Every value that you have listed, find life experiences that would affirm that there is a behavior pattern that aligns with that value. Each and every value that you have will have evidence from your life experiences. So anybody who would like to share, have you made a list of a few of your values? I hope you've taken a screenshot if you wanted to. And um, yes, I invite anyone who has something that you'd like to share. Have you gotten your values? You can also put it in the chat if you have come up with some values. For example, you know, sometimes um, health is something you value you know, you value or contribution perhaps, giving, you know. Um, I know a lot of the times I value comfort. So I may see in my purchases that I'm, I often, I see that I often choose comfort, comfort and convenience, you know. So anybody who values comfort, convenience, um, maybe you uh, value life experiences. I hope I have not left you more confused with the questions and values. Anybody has come up with anything?
uh, Sheetal, you know, whenever we, I mean, we are talking about uh, feeling proud and happy. I think um, you know when my when I bought my own house um, without any help, um, and uh, you know, usually what happens is any single lady who take her parents or siblings go ask research. For me, I took a call and I just said I need your blessing. So one thing I felt was that I'm capable of taking my decisions independently. The great sense of pride and accomplishment that's what is coming up for me as of now. And what gave me happiness, I think, when I look back, I think it's only going on vacations that's ever given me any happiness. Got that. Thanks for sharing, Jyoti. So certainly, I think one of the things is uh, I could be wrong, but correct me. Um, in you value independence, your independence, right? Um, and uh, you value the accomplishments that you yourself are responsible for, okay? Uh, Swapna here is sharing, I felt happy when an elderly in law remembered me as taking care of her well in her last breath. So I think Swapna, what would it be then? Uh, would it be okay, taking care, giving time, time to someone in need, uh, you know, taking care of someone in need, right? Maybe these are the situations. Okay. Now, um, I am going to share what is, what is it that once you have your uh, values, how is it that you can see expense after expense, uh, whether you are um, spending in alignment with your values or not? Okay. And how can you course correct in case um, such an expenditure happens. Now, a step that you can do is each month, if you're into writing your monthly expenses, you know, where you spend your money every rupee, um, then, uh, you know, there's something we do in the money gym program as well, right? And uh, you may have, a, let's say, a health subscription. So give me some items, guys. What are some items that you commonly spend on? Petrol, conveyance, or I don't know if EMI oh. would come into that. Petrol. So that's a routine expense. Uh -huh. EMI, e EMI towards mm -hmm. what? I think, you know, the item loan? doesn't matter. Home loan, right? Okay, home loan, EMI. Uh -huh. internet, electricity, right? Uh, solo traveling, let's say you have a travel fund that you're building. Yeah. Um, clothes. Yeah, clothes, did you say clothes? Groceries. Yeah. Groceries, yes. yeah. Uh, Medicines. Okay, so let's have these for the time being. And then um, the question we are answering is, what are we valuing here? You know, what are you valuing? Valuing a spelling out the other. I don't know. Okay. So it could be as simple as this. So when you have a health subscription, then what are you valuing here is a question you may want to ask, right? Uh, maybe you value a fit body or being healthy, feeling healthy, right? I value that I have a strong, healthy body, for example, okay? Petrol, anything, any value that you can associate expenditure on petrol with? What do you value here? Similarly, what do you value when you have bought that home, right? What are you valuing? You know, this could be maybe and comfort, security. security. Yeah, comfort and security. Right? Now it's my own. Nobody can chase for me petrol, out. Petrol, can it be time? Sorry, um, for petrol, can it be time? Yeah, I think it's really, it really goes back to why did I even buy the car in the first place, right? right. I bought the car because it saves me time or it's, uh, 
to like, wait for a bus or to wait for a cab to come yeah it's also comfort again like my for comfort, my dad yes. for example having a car was comfort for the entire family you know um internet when you spend on internet what is it that you're valuing connectivity easy access to knowledge and information knowledge yeah 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 these days if you don't have access to internet it means there's no knowledge you feel like oh my god i'm in a dark dark hole okay access information knowledge you value knowledge right um yeah electricity so like this um solo traveling richa can tell us solo traveling richa what are you valuing here freedom freedom the freedom and experiences that you get out experience, experience life experiences okay so like this you you can write down what are you valuing and then the next question can be is this aligned to my goal and uh, you may write a minus or a plus or a zero so if you do a minus means uh, no it's not aligned to my goal you know uh, i may be spending here and but it is not taking me closer to my goal it can also be that okay so on one part you get to see are my expenses aligned or you know sometimes you may see that you know i i value something else now commonly let's say for junk food okay uh, because it's a relatable example i may say that i truly value having a fit healthy body so the moment i am eating junk food then it's it somewhere is not aligned to what i really value right and then when you can see that this is not aligned to my value system then next month i can adjust it i am more conscious right so that is how you can use something like this to further guide even guide you and then it's like an internal yardstick you have right <laughs> so that is what um sometimes you may see that okay you value freedom but you're not putting any money towards it you know so so that's what okay so this is how you can use something like a simple structure like this to really and see that you are aligned with the values so that's another something i wanted to bring to you guys today and this and many more such structures are also available in the money gym program for you to or uh, truly find fulfillment in the kind of purchases you're spending you're doing okay so that's what i had planned from you know to bring in into the discussion from chapter 9 anybody who would like to add anything before we move on to the next part which are saying richer the junk food you mean ah huh? yes <laughs> uh i don't remember if these questions were part of chapter 9 hmm the questions that would help you spend money more thoughtfully and save as well was that 9 or 10 if no one sees this purchase do i still want it yeah i think that's chapter 10 maybe before that yeah and yeah, actually after this exercise she told i realized while i was taking a lot of pride in saying that my expenses are only big basket usme bhi i think one third cheeze aisi hai should not be ordering <laughs> <laughs> yes oh, exactly yes. jyoti i think this thought goes through my mind every day that i have ordered this but it's not good for my health and in, in fact sometimes even my parents were like ye khareed lo na please hamare liye <laughs> but this is not good for our health but then you know yeah yeah so I there is in. palak methi khakra and theplas and there is coke and pasta and then there are swiss rolls and cream biscuits and bourbons so hmm. so now one of the things i will tell you jyoti is number one you have to go back and watch the videos yes, <laughs> yes. number two yes. you have to write item or not just write big basket mein maine 2000 spend kiye but item wise right yes. then you do this exercise yes. go back to your videos okay yes, yes. <laughs> great okay over to kanchan kanchan what do you want to share with the community from chapter 10 chapter 10 is uh, another very beautiful one where they talk, where she is talking about dreamers and realists 
So how many of us are dreamers here and how many of us are realists? And there's a beautiful thing like saving scape. How do dreamers save and how do realists save? So first and foremost, I would like to invite you all to share your dreams with any, whatever you all had in mind to become and have you achieved that or not. Okay, Peter shares he's achieved one dream. Nisha is in between. Baki are in the pipeline. Okay, she's in. Jyoti is also right in the middle. Oh, Sheetal, quitting your job was one of your dreams? Yeah, I mean, I think I never labeled it as, as my dream, but it was definitely something that I had been, I had wanted to do and working towards for the past three, four years. I, I mean, you know, every, I had already told my manager and she knew about the work I do at Women on Wealth and one appraisal, one yearly discussion with Jake Boldia, the next year I'm still sitting in the same discussion, the following year I'm still sitting in the same discussion, you know, so I used to feel, oh my God. I'm still here. I'm still here every time. But uh, yeah, that's why I finally came through this year. So okay. that's another one. So yeah. how, how do you feel about it? Um, honestly, I don't feel so different because okay. I had been doing uh, something like this. I mean, I had been juggling both for a very long time, mm -hmm. um, but I had set a certain routine. They can, yeah, I think I can sleep more peacefully and sleep uh, more um, so that's the accomplishment, I think. <laughs> yes. So yeah, she speaks about uh, dreams wherein she says that everybody gets some or the other dreams or they have certain dreams in childhood that they want to achieve uh, when they are big enough, when they have enough money, when they have enough support. So uh, she's given us some characteristics of dreamers as well as realists. So when... Uh, we are, there are certain dreamers who are impulsive people who just have say around 15 to 20 dreams or in a month or something and they want to do, do it all without giving it much thought. And on the other side, she's also telling us about the realists. Who are realists and how do they calculate everything? So there's a saving scale that she's given. Also, there are certain dreamers who are equally dreamers as well as realists, wherein they just tell us uh, how these people actually write down their dreams. And she's given us a trick over here that whenever you get some dreams, just write it down on a notebook. Close the notebook for two weeks. Then go back to it after two weeks and see what if any of those dreams have reoccurred in the span of these two weeks that the notebook was shut. If there's something that keeps coming back to you, look at it deeply. Actually look at it and then start planning for it. If it's reoccurring, there is a reason for it. It wouldn't otherwise reoccur. So if it's reoccurring, make a plan. Like start backwards. This is your dream. This is what you need to do to achieve it. How can you break it down? Yeah, so anybody here would like to come in I would request you all to come and uh, share this with us. Any of you who have had dreams when you all were small and have been able to achieve it. Yes. Everybody has given up in the daily grind. I've been thinking of moving out of my in-laws house for a lot of time and now I mean we are thinking of moving out so that's something which is happening I mean once the situation gets better we'll look out for houses so that's been always in my mind and I'm glad it's happening. <laughs> Thank you for sharing Sneha. Jyoti? Yeah, I wanted to, uh, uh, you know, always have my own house, you know. Um, I did make it, but at the same time, it is not exactly the kind of house I want to live in. Of course, it's given on rent. It's a small one. I just wanted to see my name. So that part is accomplished. 
but my dream home you know where i see my next 10 15 20 years till my final journey uh, you know is in a township where i mean i don't know where life will take me i'm you know single but i imagine living in a 4000 square feet large house at times so sometimes you know dreams defy logic and vice versa so you know with the very nice granite flooring balconies on both the sides no peeping in of neighbors into or you know either ways and pure city ka view har jagah se dikhna chahiye ekdam 30th floor pe you know so so i would say half of my dream has come true i am the owner of a house uh, with a dream one is yet to come so yeah, working at it thank you for sharing jyoti that's a wonderful dream i hope you achieve it soon uh, start planning for it i'm sure you must have done it start planning backwards upar se niche jao cut it down into small small plans what you need to do on daily basis to achieve it so uh, on the other hand what i also liked over here was that when she said that realists have very limited uh, dreams or a very limited plan so how do they how do they go about it how do realists go about it we have very limited plan so whatever comes to their mind your she saying whatever comes to their mind they write it down and they will start planning for it and apply those things apply whatever they want to do that is how with those limited dreams also they are able to achieve it and this reminds me of the saying right uh, what uh, a a dream without a plan is just a goal without a plan a is just a wish it. right so yeah so if we are at the extremes then a dreamer might just keep dreaming one after the other dreams uh, and not have a plan to actually accomplish right? right so yeah and this book keeps reminding us to be in moderation to find that balance yeah great point kanjan she is always uh, she is also shared one small instance uh, in a situation where there was a wife and a husband and the husband just wanted to uh, borrow 2 2 lakh dollars to open up a sandwich shop he wanted to quit his job and open up a sandwich shop and he had no business plan and no track record of understanding how to run a restaurant to most everyone the whole idea sounded foolish In this situation, the wife wasn't a Debbie Downer. She was a lifeguard. She saved both of them from making a massive financial mistake that would take years to recover. So here they say the husband was a dreamer, and without a plan, how did he even think of uh, opening a sandwich shop without any knowledge? Yeah, be realistic. anybody who has done a similar mistake uh we do have a uh, swapna sharing in the chat i start with great gusto uh, gusto and then enthusiasm fizzles down uh, you're not alone i lose focus on target and marketing you're not alone hurdles circumstances slow the progress down uh yeah so everybody who is with swapna please raise your hand <laughs> Yes, so you're not alone, Sapna. You're not alone. Thank you for sharing, Sapna. Yeah, you're not alone, and the and that's I think that's the best part that the community uh, keeps inspiring us and keeps acting as a reminder, and then we get back up again and we continue to do right. So at least that's what happens here. Awesome. What else, Kanjan? Yeah, I think we can read a bit of chapter eleven, Shita. If do we have some time? Five yes, yes. I think it's always a good idea to kickstart the next yeah, chapter kick so that we uh, pick up the momentum from there. Um, I need somebody to volunteer to read. Who wants to volunteer to read? I'll share it on the screen for everybody. So please read two pages of chapter. We will be reading chapter eleven and twelve in the coming week. Okay. Do we have a volunteer yet?
चेंजेस just write it down for now focus on the things you are uh, focus on the things you are willing to work for and yeah, as you start thinking about what your dreams are i want you to think in three different categories short term long term and shared these three categories will help you both discover what's mo most important to you and prioritize what you do when short term dreams i'm all for big dreams that said they are all not uh, all doable right away so i want you to uh, so i want to encourage you to think about dreams in the short term separately from dreams in the long term short term dreams are obtainable in 2 years or less anything longer i consider a long term dream short term dreams are exciting because they are attainable don't don't stop okay next okay in the near future if you are more of a realist you are likely love short term dreams because the steps are clearly defined with less room for ambiguity if you are more of a dreamer you will love short term dreams because they will give you quick wins some examples of short term dreams are take your kids to experience a national park get out of debt so you get to keep all your income move to a different house stay home with your kids and homeschool them travel to a country you have always wanted to explore start painting again and sell your art The powerful thing about short-term dreams is that they are like fuel. They usually cost less money to accomplish, and because they are quicker to achieve, they are super motivating. You can also see pretty easily the steps involved in making short-term dreams a reality, including what sacrifices you will need to make. If you are just cutting expenses for the heck of it, you can run out of steam quickly because there is no light at the end of the tunnel. But when you are aiming for something you care about, the hard work and sacrifices are bearable, even energizing. Maybe you're saving like crazy to go to a beach. You're six months out, and you want to hit a certain number in your bank account in order to cash flow the trip. Cutting your restaurant budget in half for the next six months may not sound like a good time, but man, you're going to eat well and have a blast at the beach. Or maybe you've always wanted to learn how to bake beautiful tarts and pies. Signing up for a culinary class will mean devoting one night a week to learning the basics of baking. Plus, you will have to practice in order to get it right. can i volunteer as taste tester but it'll be so worth it to get to serve amazing desserts to friends and family whatever the sacrifice is of money you need to save when you're doing it for something better you have hope and motivation that keeps you driving forward winston and i recently finished saving for a short term dream we knew we wanted to get a new car once our third baby came into the picture and i had my eye on that new mini van i talked about earlier that's right as a mom with three kids a mini van was my dream car i can hear the haters now that's not a cool mom car but let me tell you this van has more bells and whistles than my old suv did and for way less and don't even get me started on the seats that move side to side for the kids to get in and out of quickly plus automatic doors and more i could be a mini van saleswoman in a different life this was a short term dream that required some discipline to save what we needed we had to say no to some fun things in order to say yes to the van but i'm grateful we did because now i get to enjoy it every single day long term dreams long -term we may pause here sneha thank okay. you so much for getting us kick started on the next uh, week's reading we have chapter 11 and 12 guys uh, so you know ensure that you are sharing from whatever you learn from these chapters in our telegram group and um, thank you all for joining in on the discussion and i hope you found value from today's conversation and today's small exercises that we did if you did then don't forget to again tell in the telegram group so that more women can join in the next time and they get value out of their participation Okay, so uh, yeah, continue reading. Uh, at eight o'clock, we have the questions ready for the Financial Friday quiz, and we will see if 
Richa is going to rule again tonight or is it going to be somebody else? So that's the that's what's going to happen. Don't forget to keep sharing with your friends about uh, you know, their access to financial education uh, through the Women on Wealth community. We will be doing a live webinar on Sunday morning, financial success model. Go and tell your friends to attend it. Reach out to me if you need any information. Next Saturday at um, 11 o'clock, we will also be doing a, an introduction session to the stock investing program. So that's also coming up. If you have friends and if you yourself have never attended it, then uh, this is a good opportunity to attend. Okay, so thank you all and uh, lots of love to each one of you. Have a great rest of the week. Keep coming to all the lives and keep taking value at Women on Wealth. So thank you all. Lots of love. See you in the Telegram group. Take care. Bye-bye.